Hello again everybody. It's been about a week since I made my last video and uh, I wanted to get with you uh, is this would be part two of what I was talking about. I accidentally <laughs> cut myself off. Well, my uh, smartphone cut me off and so these things happen I'm sure to people that are new to these uh, modern devices. At my age I'm glad that I can do as good a job with these things as I do and I'll get right to it. I, I wanted to talk more about the Mandela effect uh, because it's important to me. Uh, from changes in the Bible to changes in nature, different kinds of lightning than there used to be. I've been reading a lot of different things. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the Lord's Prayer has changed from uh, trespassers to debtors and that wasn't uh, the case before. Also wineskins uh, it warned not to put old, new wine into old wineskins, lest they would break. Now it talks about bottles, which they didn't have those kinds of bottles. And if you put new wine or old wine into bottles, either way, it wouldn't hurt the wine. So it doesn't even make any sense now, the way it talks about warning not to put uh, wine into bottles because the bottles will break. And that makes no sense at all. Wineskins made perfect sense because, well, it's relative to uh, enduring the, the wine being inside of, of the wineskin. So anyway, those are things. I don't want to get caught up just in Bible changes because then what happens is you get uh, into uh, discussions about theology and everybody has a different idea about religion, and especially with uh, Christianity. And I respect everybody's opinion, but my video is not about Christianity specifically, it is about the changes that are uh, occurring and I felt that the Bible should be included because it's an important uh, historical document as well as a, a report, important religious text for millions of people and it's very traditional and even if you don't go by the Bible you know that it's a traditional book if nothing else and if it's changed well that shows quite a bit but also the uh, Lindbergh baby was looking into that. I remember that they never found the Charles Lindbergh baby. That was called the crime of the century when I was younger. And uh, people used to joke around, of course, many, many years later, decades later, and say, well, I'm the Lindbergh baby. You know, that's why I didn't tell you, but I'm the Lindbergh baby that they didn't find. And all these different people wrote books about the fact that they didn't ever find the baby. Now in this timeline, they did find the baby unfortunately dead and that's not what people remember uh, there's so much residual evidence on that that it's very spooky uh, the uh, the thing is there's there's important things and I believe all these things are important whether there are small details that have changed or whether there are major events like the Lindbergh kidnapping they all point to the Mandela effect and the reason I include most all of them is because one thing will resonate with one person and another thing will resonate with someone else. For me, of all things, it was that James Bond movie that I talked about and Dolly with her braces not being there. And that's what jolted me. And then Rod Sterling was another one uh, that, that really got me because Rod Sterling is, I joke about that all the time. I say, well, Rod Sterling Sterling's going to show up because things are really getting strange. And it's kind of a personal joke I've always had. And it's always been his name. And now that person never existed. So really, these things are important. Um, and one of the, the songs that I, I mentioned last video, that there's a song by the Rolling Stones, uh, Paint It Black, that a guy said had changed. Now, I don't find that that was the case. Not, that's just my opinion. But I do find a, a song, and I'm not, I was never big into Prince, although Prince was a major uh, recording artist in the 1980s, as everybody knows. And a lot of the girls I used to date loved Prince, and so I'd I hear it whether I wanted to or not. And I don't dislike the music, it just wasn't my first choice. I'm more of an Almond Brothers kind of guy. But, you know, it's dance music, and I wanted to dance with the girls, so I listened to the Prince music, and uh, it was okay. Uh, I still like it's happy beat, you know, upbeat music, especially uh, one song, uh, Let's Get Crazy. And uh, I remember in the beginning of that song, it's kind of like a, uh, a 
minister up there. Dearly beloved, we are gathered today to celebrate this thing called life. And then it goes on to, I won't sing for you because I want you to watch the video. But, you know, let's get crazy, da -da 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 -da, and so forth. So now I listen to the song, and there isn't any version like that. Now, everybody I talk to remembers, dearly beloved, we're gathered together to celebrate this thing called life. But that's not what it says now. It says, we're gathered here together to get through this thing called life which is not as happy, is not as upbeat, but the most important thing is different. It's not what he said before, I promise you. And uh, it's almost like if somebody came out and said, uh, you know, Aaron Presley is uh, one of the greatest rock and roll stars. And you would say, you mean Elvis Presley? You know, this is, we're getting there. <laughs> we're, we're not quite to that big a change, uh, you know. Billy Holly instead of Buddy Holly. I mean, what's next? This is the thing. If these changes happen, and I'm sure that it wasn't that way before, then that's what I have to ask is what's coming next? Uh, you know, we have vampire deer, which I would thought at my age I would have already heard of that. And they have so many animals that they've discovered. Now, from the time of Jesus to the time that we set foot in America, the population of the world went from about one billion people to about two billion people. So it took that long for the population to double. Now it's estimated that when I was born, the population of the world was about 3.25 billion. And now the population of the world is about 7.4 billion, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that range. And it's climbing quickly. And that's unfortunate because there's way too many people the animals and the plants need places to live too, and we can't just keep uh, having more and more people, but that's, that's my opinion. The answer to pollution and war and a lot of these other things is depopulation, uh, depopulate, depopulating the, the, uh, the human species as a whole. So I don't want to do it in any weird way, I'm not part of the New World Order, thank God. But I do want people to be more responsible and think about you know, where are the animals going to live. If you have 10 kids, you know, or on average certain um, sections of people that have, you know, many, many children, uh, this is not fair. And it's not only that they're, the animals and the plants and the earth will suffer, but the, the people eventually will suffer too because there won't be enough food or fresh water and those kinds of things. So we have to think about these things. But my whole point going back to it is that uh, the discoveries that they've made with animals uh, in the last few years it, it's been a astounding amount of animals that they've discovered and you would think with the kind of population that we've had there isn't hardly any place in the whole world that you can go where you don't find a lot of people and there's no place you can go where people don't traverse the area and explore and poke around and dig and so forth and you get the idea so how in the world are we just now finding vampire deer, bats the size of Volkswagens, right? New kinds of, of apes? I mean, you would think that we've already discovered. I mean, we're not talking about just monkeys, but regular uh, part of the ape uh, family, the, the uh, hominid. So what's going on here? We, we're discovering all kinds of things in the ocean. And we're discovering things like uh, raccoon dogs. You can't make this stuff up. Raccoon dogs? <laughs> I mean, they look cute, but they'll eat you, right? They're wild dogs, and they look like a raccoon, but they're, they're a dog. Now, why well, hadn't I heard of that before? Where have they been hiding? Where did they hide all these years? How did they get away from being discovered? Are they hanging out with Bigfoot? I mean, come on. Uh, I just find this all to be quite amazing, and I, I'm going to cut this a little bit short this time because I don't want to... The last video ran out on me, and I got a lot of nice response from it, and I don't want to take too long, but just want to keep up with things, give you a few uh, ideas about things to look up. These are some things that I've looked up, things that I've mentioned, and uh, rainbow trees and rainbow hills and fruits and vegetables that are all different colors. Uh, the color chartreuse seems to have changed. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time, and thank you again for watching. God bless you.